Hey guys, what is the biggest threat to Bitcoin Cash? Bitcoin Cash could very well die, and I'm gonna tell you in this video what I think is gonna happen, what I think is finally gonna put the final nail in the coffin and kill off Bitcoin Cash once and for all. And it might not be the reason that you expect. Let's get into it. What's up guys, it's Mark with CryptoQuest95. Uh, yeah, you might have noticed that I branded everything that, why? First off, I am in Japan right now. This is one of my favorite cities in Japan. It's called Okiyama. And Okiyama is a kind of off the beaten path. There's not many, many foreigners here. Um, sort of past Kobe before you get down a little bit further uh, to like Kyushu. And Okiyama is known for uh, peaches, a few other things and also I have a friend here I have some friends here so uh, visiting for a bit what was I talking about <laughs> Bitcoin I guess oh yeah crypto quest 95 so the reason I changed it to that is because um, I wanted to have a name of my channel by the hey, by the way you might notice that I'm not crossing the street right now even though there's no cars at all and that's because in Japan people do not cross crosswalks when it's red even if there's no car coming even if the road is like in Kyoto where the streets are like that tiny like people still won't cross the road they adhere to the rules no jaywalking oh look at this this is cool this is actually a clock look at that it's like a garden clock here i'll extend this a bit taller selfie stick beautiful huh with the pansies right so i wanted to have a name for my channel uh that's a little bit more irreverent a little bit more kind of relaxed i felt like my content was getting a little bit too I don't know if aggressive is the right word, but I just wanted to kind of tone things down. And I was thinking like nostalgia, 1995, like those old days of booting up your old computer. The game I used to play back then was called uh, One Must Fall 2049 or something. Anyway, I just kind of had like a nostalgia retro thing. and also kind of fits because Bitcoin is restricted to one megabyte blocks. So I kind of think about like floppy disks and all that. So yeah, anyway, CryptoQuest 1995. Also, CryptoQuest is because I like to document uh, cryptocurrency actually being used as currency around the world. A big part of my channel is, is adoption, which at some point I'd love to get back into soon as there is more adoption to cover. I mean, everything is kind of stalled out, which really sucks. Crypto has become this like thing that's... I don't know. Cryptocurrency. It's not really a currency. It's not being used, so that kind of sucks. But yeah, anyway, that is CryptoQuest. Uh, I'm going to walk back this way now. I've kind of gone like the length of this river, I think. And getting sand in my boots, which sucks. One of the things that people do on Twitter, X, I guess, when they want to show that Bitcoin Cash is, you know, doing poorly, it's suffering, it's uh, going to die, it's already dead is they show the price chart, especially when you compare it against Bitcoin. And this is not really a good indicator of how Bitcoin Cash is doing. Um, in one way it is, right? Obviously, if the price of Bitcoin Cash is low, that's not good because you want your currency to have value. Although Bitcoin Cash does. In fact, what you want your currency to have more than value is stability. So actually these like giant ups and downs of Bitcoin, uh, that's actually not ideal probably be better to have something that's kind of consistent over time so it becomes a good medium of exchange but that's a whole nother discussion for another day but showing the chart of Bitcoin cash and all this stuff it is worth less than it was but so long as Bitcoin cash is fulfilling its original goal right which is being peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash and so long as it has a hash rate so long people are using it as currency um, it's not it's not dead and in fact, it could be in the future that the way Bitcoin Cash is used and the way that Bitcoin is used is the Bitcoin people, the B2C people, just stop trying to do lightning and all these scaling solutions and just do a two-coin solution. You keep all your money in Bitcoin. That's where you hold it. That's the store of value. And when you need to make purchases, you take a little bit out of Bitcoin and you put it into Bitcoin Cash and that's your you know, money that you just use to buy stuff. Um, or 
more likely what will happen is you'll take your money out of Bitcoin and put it into uh, you know government controlled uh, central banking digital dollars, um, which sucks, but that could be it too. Oh wait, the, the river is moving really fast today. You see that? Pretty cool. Hmm. This coffee, by the way, is a new coffee that I've never heard of. I've never tried before. It's actually from um, Yunnan in China. How cool is that? And they take the coffee cherries and ferment them with strawberry. Like they put strawberries on the coffee beans and just let them ferment. And then when they take them and process it into coffee, it tastes like strawberries in here. It tastes like tons of strawberry syrup, but there's none. It's just coffee beans that have been, you know, fermented with strawberries. It's very cool. Very cool. Anyway, this two coin solution could very well be the future. And it makes a lot of sense. You don't have to worry about layered solutions and paying lots of on-chain fees. You just have a second coin, whether it's Bitcoin Cash or Monero or something that's usable, even something, unfortunately, like Tether. <laughs> or, well, Tether's probably not a good example because the fees are so high, but, um, you know, any, any of these state-controlled digital dollars, two-coin solution kind of works. But today I was kind of reflecting on what the biggest threat to Bitcoin Cash is. And again, a lot of these people that are in BTC say that it's the price crashing, it's the chart, it's Bitcoin Cash only being worth $400 or $500 or $100. But again, that's, that's not what it is. What it actually is, is something very simple. And that is Bitcoin raising its block size limit. So let me explain why. I think this is the most reasonable uh, future projection of Bitcoin and the death of Bitcoin Cash. Lightning right now, any second layer solution needs to have a bigger block size for Bitcoin. Now I know what you're thinking. Bitcoin is the most stable of all the cryptos. Uh, no. I would argue BTC, Bitcoin Core, is the version of Bitcoin that has the most significant changes from the original version of Bitcoin that Bitcoin lays out in the white paper than any other chain, than BSV, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin ABC. Okay, maybe that one is arguable. But the original version of Bitcoin, what is laid out in the white paper, what we know from reading all Satoshi's emails, all of it, is that Bitcoin was meant to scale. Bitcoin was not meant to have full nodes on everyone's computer. We were supposed to have SPVs. This was the version of Bitcoin that was the intent, what was being built. And Bitcoin, Bitcoin Core today has taken literally every aspect of what Bitcoin was supposed to do and socially hard forked it. So if you're talking about stability of the base layer, Bitcoin BTC has the least stable history of having a stable base layer. It has the most dramatic changes of any other chain, including uh, Bitcoin Cash. People will say, well, they'd never raise the block size limit because again, it's Bitcoin BTC is the most stable uh, base layer, the most stable coin, but it's not. It's the least stable, that would be my argument, of any of the offshoots of Bitcoin. The second argument is that Bitcoin will never change because uh, the Bitcoin culture is to keep Bitcoin the same. But there's already people that are talking about raising the number of coins from 21 million up. Bitcoin can be changed because it is a social consensus. If most people in Bitcoin want Bitcoin to be changed, it can be changed. This is no different than Bitcoin Cash, by the way. Where's an argument of this happening before? Well, the easiest argument is what I just said. Bitcoin was meant to have a temporary one megabyte um, limit on the block size. And socially, that was changed. Anyone back in the day in 2019, uh, sorry, 2009, 2010, 2011, etc., would think you were absurd out of your mind. Bitcoin would never have ossified one megabyte uh, limits, right? That would be as absurd as Bitcoin going from 21 million coins to 22 million coins. But it happened. It happened with Bitcoin BTC, with Bitcoin Core. The social fabric changed, and thus the coin changed. This is not something you can argue, by the way. If you're a Bitcoin maximalist, you must agree with what I'm saying. Now, what you might disagree with is you say, well, there's more players in the field right now. 
and the likelihood of these kind of changes is, is small. And you may be right. But we do know that there's already talk in the Bitcoin community on changing the amount of Bitcoin in the Bitcoin system. And, and that just blows my mind. So if they're willing to change that, they're gonna be willing to change the block size. Number three, for Bitcoin to scale, for Bitcoin to be any kind of medium of exchange at all, there has to be a block size increase. We know it. Lightning, even if Lightning works, which it doesn't, and I will do a whole video on why Lightning is a complete and utter failure as a substitute for increasing the block size, um, although Lightning does have some pretty cool uses, it can't be peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. Even if Lightning does become more widely used, there is a cap where Lightning will still require a bigger base layer to functionally transmit enough on-chain transactions to accommodate enough users to use Lightning. We know this, right? Uh, the exception is if virtually everyone in the world, like in El Salvador, is not actually using Lightning, but just using central banking that pretends to be Lightning. If that's the case, then maybe. But we do know that Bitcoin will have to increase its base layer at some point to accommodate Lightning if Lightning is going to be the solution. But of course, most of us, including Bitcoin mas maximalists, know right now that Bitcoin is not going to be the uh, answer. So maybe a future technology will but lightning won't be it. All of these points that come together represent to me a, a scenario that right now, no, right now we're pretty much locked in with one megabyte. Uh, right now it is what it is, but through social changes, look again, Bitcoin was hijacked and radically altered its entire trajectory in a 15 year period. Radically altered its very base function as a medium of exchange, cheap, instant transactions peer-to-peer, -peer, right? That was radically altered in just 15 years. Imagine what could happen in 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 years with Bitcoin. Thinking that it is stuck as it is, is absurd because there will be changes. There will be changes. And the biggest threat to Bitcoin Cash, and you know, people say, people have asked me like if I have money in, in Bitcoin, and the answer is yes, I have a little bit of money in Bitcoin because it's a hedge against the fact that at some point, Bitcoin is going to increase the block size. And if that ever happens, it will, it could, I should say, uh, wipe out the entire need for Bitcoin Cash. I think that the way to destroy Bitcoin Cash is to increase the block size of BTC. And that's the real uh, danger to BCH. Doing that would not only allow for Bitcoin to become peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, which is kind of the point in my opinion, but also would allow things like coin mixing, which is important for privacy. Bitcoin Cash can do that. Um, Bitcoin cannot. Bitcoin is tracked and it's not private. And if the block size was increased enough to allow for coin mixing on Bitcoin Core, uh, that would give all the privacy you need, not perfect, but pretty much all you need to protect users of Bitcoin. So there's a lot of advantages to it. Now, what is the chance that Bitcoin raises its block limit? What is the chance that that happens? Kind of depends. Some people, for example, Jeremy of the Bitcoin uh, Cash podcast say that it's basically 0%, some, some marginal number above zero. So it's something not even really to worry about. I think the potential is probably a little bit higher than, than zero or marginally above zero. I think that really all it takes is change of guard, new people to take over. Trust me, in my lifetime, I've gone through a lot of different leadership periods where I had a boss who had a new boss take over and everything that I thought was ossified and could never change was radically altered very fast. New people coming in bring new ideas. Ideas and mindsets can shift, not in the short term, but in the long term. And there is a very high probability that at some point someone comes in who is on the decision-making team, you could say, at Bitcoin where these changes can come in place. That's a whole nother story. The idea that Bitcoin can never change and that the Bitcoin uh, changes to the Bitcoin network is completely decentralized is a little bit foolhardy. There are definite gatekeepers who 
decide what changes can go through the network and what changes can't. And a uh, couple gatekeepers along with influencers and trendsetters and you have a system where changes can occur. Again, maybe not over the short term, but definitely over the long term. So let's kind of review <laughs> my entire uh, thesis here. So what is the greatest threat to Bitcoin Cash? Is it the price falling? No, it's not the price falling. People are going to continue using Bitcoin Cash as peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. Is it competitors? Possibly, but probably not, because there are, what, 20,000 other coins on the market, including some that have advantages over Bitcoin Cash, like Monero, in terms of its uh, privacy. But people still use Bitcoin Cash. Is it central bank digital dollars? Maybe, but even in that case, people will still use, likely, Bitcoin Cash in some capacity. So what is the biggest threat to it? It is Bitcoin getting its shit together and finally doing uh, a block size increase. So yeah, we'll see what the potential of this is. Maybe in 20 years from now, I will reshare this video when I'm in my 60s or whatever. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll look back at this and being like, wow, he was totally wrong about that or wow, they totally killed Bitcoin Cash by increasing the block size and now we have a functional currency. Uh, by the way, I would love that to happen. I would love for Bitcoin Cash Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin ABC, all of these coins just die. And I would love to hop right back into Bitcoin Core if it could fulfill what its white paper says it's supposed to be, which is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic digital cash. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time. There's a lot of topics I wanna to cover on Bitcoin, so be sure to follow if you want to hear my opinions for whatever they're worth to you. Some other topics I wanna to talk about are Lightning Network, the hostile takeover of Bitcoin and the hijacking of Bitcoin. Um, I want to do a video on the true, the true advantages of BTC Bitcoin Core and some arguments that they frankly are right on and why they may be the ones who are right in, in this kind of like debate about block size. Yeah, just a whole bunch of videos on these kind of topics. So I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.